Hey guys, this is Jennifer Seymour with the Shooter's Mindset, and we are live with episode 322 of the Shooter's Mindset. We've got our co-host here, Greg. How's it going? Hey, everyone. And our guest of the hour, way later than should have been, because it was one of those I hadn't crossed paths and haven't hooked up with him to be able to do this, but way later than it should have been, but Tate Streeter of Impact Precision Shooting. How's Hi, it going? Thanks. It's going good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we love to talk about actions. You sent that picture with like for the show announcement of like, you know, all the actions and we were like, oh, those are pretty. And it was funny you asked for that picture. I actually went in. So I don't work on Sundays normally, but I went in Sunday and had those lined up and I thought, oh, I'm going to sneak a picture of that. And it just worked out pretty good. Yeah, that worked out perfect. It was a great picture. So for those that are unfamiliar with you, which is hard to believe, but for anybody that is unfamiliar with you, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started into precision rifle shooting. Um, you know, I've talked about this on a couple of podcasts, but, and I'll probably tell it different just because I have a bad memory, but um, I started shooting young. Um, I can remember shooting my dad's 22 when I was four, um, had my first 22 when I was eight, um, you know, hunted, we got little 22 plinker targets, set them up at 100 yards, and went through a bunch of bucket of golden bullets. Um, and, and it pretty much just evolved into hunting and shooting for fun. And in 2012 or 13, um, I actually got on longrangehunting.com. And believe it or not, I found Rick Reeves on there. He had a 4R rifle club, and they shot clay pigeons at four and 600 yards or something like that. They called them, they had actually shot little balloons, had balloon shoots, stuff like that. Um, ended up reaching out to him and got a hold of him and met him out man, in a pasture somewhere with a couple buddies and um, asked him for recommendations on a gun. And at the time I was, I was just out of college, you know, and didn't have the finances to just go throw down, um, you know, for a rifle. So over the course of a year, built a rifle. By the time I got that rifle done, kind of the game it involved, and they started shooting off barricades. And I originally built a 284 um, Winchester without a break, by the way. And um, by the time I got that, went playing with them, they all had muzzle brakes and um, 6547s and stuff like that. So it was kind of a slow go, but I started shooting, you know, OPPS matches. OPPS um, back in 2013 and 2014 was probably. Um, looking back, and some people may disagree with this, probably the most dominant state club that there was, at least we feel that it was, and, and it may be just that everybody wasn't on Facebook, you know, in other states, but back then OPPS kind of set the standard for how, um, you know, club, state clubs worked. But, um, man, showed up at an OPPS match, and, you know, just like you show up at a PRS match, everybody's there willing to, you know, help and, you know, let you borrow their gear tell you what they think, whether you want to hear it or not. And uh, shot, shot OPPS for about a year and, you know, just crying on the internet and Facebook, saw the PRS stuff. And that's kind of like the ultimate end goal is to, you know, go and, and see where you rate up these matches. And um, I kicked off shooting PRS in um, the first part of 2014. And uh, man, just started a journey that, you know, was a hobby at first. And now it's kind of turned into a, a career and a, and, a, and a lifestyle. So. Um, it's, it's been pretty amazing. You know, not everybody gets to do something they truly love every day. I've, I've been able to do it. It's really been, you know, I haven't ever thought it this way, but I've had people tell me you're kind of living the American dream. And, and honestly, I'm blessed to be, you know, able to say that I kind of am right now. So, uh, you know, I love shooting matches and traveling and meeting guys, you know, like-minded guys and, and competing. So, so where did the, so, you know, everybody kind of knows what you do, but besides just shooting, what, like, where did the idea come from for Impact and how did it get started and get to be where it is now? Um, so, um, actually, at, golly, I got a phone call. I don't know how to turn that off. Um, Y'all quit calling Tate. I know he's popular. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, so in 2013, I shot, um, my, my, my second club match, I met Wade Studeville, who at the time was general man, manager at Surgeon Rifles and, you know, captain of the Surgeon team and all this kind of stuff. And without going into too many details, um, Surgeon got bought out by corporate and um, the small town feel, if you will, kind of left and um, they went different paths and, and Wade broke off and 
Um, I met him at a match and I had a machine shop. You know, we were basically a job shop at the time and just through small talk at matches decided um, we wanted to do our own thing, uh, make some changes that, you know, he wanted to make a surgeon that never got made. And, um, you know, just little tweaks here and there with the 700 clone, if you will. And over the course of, you know, a few matches, seeing each other and really kicking off the idea. Every time we talked, it got more serious and more serious. And we sat down in the, oh, I believe it was, you know, early, like late 2014, we finally started, you know, cutting chips on actions and, and started making it come to life. So uh, it's really you know, grown. It's really grown. We've been very blessed. There's no other way to really put it. But, um, you know, we kind of ran actions and fit them to the side and ran them when I had time. And we did that for probably a year and a half and everyone we made sold. And, you know, we didn't really dedicate to it because we didn't know how it would work out. And um, one thing led to another. Now it's all we do in the shop. So um, all we do is impact stuff in our shop. So it's been, it's been crazy. What all does impact offer now? What services and products? <clears throat> Tell us so, all. So um, 98% of what we offer are just action sales. Um, I carry stocks, um, managed stocks, I have some XLR foundations. Um, the reason I carry those products are really to help builders out. My main goal is to sell actions. And if I have stocks and components that help builders, um, you know, put together a rifle with impacts faster, then that's my end goal is to sell actions. You know, I get guys like uh, Derek Webster last week bought an EH1. Um, a DI precision, um, you know, in order for an impact. I don't know the story there, but, you know, if a guy's calling and wanting a hunting rifle and, um, you know, he can get an impact with an EH1, you know, in two or three weeks, you know, I've got a leg up on the other guys, um, you know, that they have to order, you know, and wait six months on a stock. So I try to keep a lot of components. I really don't advertise it that much. Um, but, but nine, you know, we offer complete rifle builds um, on foundations and MPAs. Um, but 98% of our goal is just to make actions and sell actions. That's so. awesome. I know a huge advantage is having all of the prefits. It is. Um, we're, you know, and I left that part out. We sell a lot of barreled actions. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are naysayers of prefits and all this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, the fact is um, guys that know what they're doing, there is no loss in a prefit, no loss whatsoever. Um, you take Austin or gain clay back hitter. I haven't, I haven't, you know, checked out the list of the top guys who are running prefits, but most of the top guys are running prefits um, from their Smiths, if you will. Now the problem with prefits are gunsmiths that don't necessarily have the measuring tools. Um, don't make the, don't chamber the barrel to spec. Um, I know Greg knows all about that, but, you know, if I send somebody an action that's intolerance on high headspace and they chamber it to fit an action, you know, the gunsmith chambers that barrel to one that was on low and they hold the other end of tolerance. And now, now they could potentially put that barrel on an action that I seen in tolerance and have a, a barrel job that's out of tolerance just because they didn't follow the assembly specs, if you will. Um, but, but yes, you're right. Um, basically, Wade really doesn't do any work for himself anymore. All of his barrels come through impact. Um, but, you know, and I left that part out, but we sell a, we sell a large number of barreled actions out. We offer selling triggers. I go ahead and install the trigger, test fire everything and ship it. And all the end user has to do is drop it in a stock or chassis of their choice. It, it's really a convenient deal for them. That's awesome. And it makes it faster if some, some companies will have the prefits ready to go and you can just order it instead of having to get a barrel and get it chambered. It's all just ready to go. And that is correct. It's very fast, very fast. Much but more I, uh, you for know, those know of us that procrastinate. <laughs> well, I, I mean, wonder who the, that is. That's the way the world's going, you know, instant gratification, you know, just to want it now. And, um, you know, being able to have quality, quality in now um, is a win for the end user. Um, you know, it really is. I'll tell you what, so, nothing, you know, just, nothing has spoiled me like Amazon Prime. You know, right. You're, I'll, I'll go and I'll order something online and like five days later, I'll get to like, this is shipped notice. And I'm like, it should have been here three days ago. Why, why is this not here yet? I'm a spoiled little brat sometimes. 
right? No, it is. Um, you know, it's nice for me because I have a pile of barrels in the office, and when I need one, I just go – I pull my barrels right from the same stack everybody else's barrels, um, you know, come off of. And, like, Clay, Clay at the finale, his barrel – wasn't shooting as good as it ought to was doing some funky stuff he had quite a few rounds on it i grabbed a br barrel out of the rack put some rounds on it in the dirt out back took it to him and off to the race he went so i mean you know the pre-fit world is it's handy um, but you got to make sure the guy that you're getting him from you know knows what he's doing for sure mm -hmm. agreed <clears throat> so what was the journey like going from a small shop where you guys were making just you know a couple actions here and there to you know the picture you sent us of just piles and piles and piles uh you know it's funny my wife just called me a workaholic earlier and sometimes it uh it drives her nuts my mind's always going um we had a shop our shop ran about 18 to 20 guys um 2011 somewhere in there and it was a job shop um and for guys that don't know what that is like we didn't know the job we were going to be doing next week um guys would call us send us a print say quote 50 of these quote 200 of these and you know we'd set it up on a machine and run the 50 or 200 and never see it again it was it was a constant grind um it was fun but it was a constant grind where you never felt like you got ahead of the curve and uh, my father-in-law is a partner in the machine shop you know he always wanted to do something over and over and over you know a production job was kind of his dream. Well, he says it's his dream, but it was a hard time, hard, hard rut for him to get out of because if it's too easy, um, good gosh. Sorry about that. Is They're it, doing that on purpose now, off? aren't they? Uh-huh. It just shows your okay. name. I'm sorry. Can you still hear me when it happens? Yes. All right. Well, I don't know how to deactivate that. I should have done that. Um, and, and it distracted me. But anyways, um, you know, like you said, in 15, it was extremely – um, it cost a, it cost quite a bit in the beginning because we would set a machine aside and I'd be working on something on the weekend. Um, I actually, people think I'm crazy, but I actually programmed the first, uh, the, the program for the first 24 receivers by hand at the machine. I did not use any auto, um, uh, CAD cam software or anything. I did it at the machine. So I'd work on it for a few hours when I had a, a, a few minutes and then I would go work on something else, get some guys going and then go back. And it was, a, it was a long process, probably took me, two weeks, you know, to get one, how I wanted it at the machine, just off and on. And, um, you know, I would say in, it, it's a constant battle. As Greg knows, I mean, like anybody that lays down and doesn't try to make your processes better, you're, you're going to get behind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, complacency is like the worst. That That's one of my fears. I don't ever want to be complacent in anything, but every day we go in, we try to make it better. We try to, you know, move parts around on machines to not have any bottlenecks um to make it as smooth as possible and if you know there's an issue i'm seeing um you know constantly where we're having to fix it you know not not major but like a tool mark or something we'll figure out how to take that away leave more material before the finish pass but to answer your question it, it's still a you can still challenge yourself to make those better every day but it's a different challenge because you're constantly making something better instead of you know sometimes in a job shop if you have 50 of them you'll just deal with the problem but um it's kind of nice having your own product um having something you sell and back and you know what makes this awesome is i get to go on the field and i build all these relationships with people that use our product and it really makes you proud um it, it really really does it sounds <clears throat> i mean it sounds kind of girly but sometimes you, you know i'd be driving down the road and get choked up um you know with how much support we actually have and how many people run our stuff so you know being able to make those every day you know it's still a grind because I make it a grind, but it's definitely a lot smoother than a job shop. If that answers your question. Yeah, that's awesome. It kind of sounds like you're kind of growing and bettering your, your baby here. We, we do constantly, you know, our sales are still more than our production. Um, and I'm in the process of, of buying my father-in-law out and we're not going to buy machines right now. So I'm trying to, trying to get the most out of it. You know, like I said, fixing those bottlenecks, like, let's move this operation over here, you know, and this guy can run it at the end of every cycle on this and, you know, trying to figure everything out to where it's as smooth as it can be. Um, we've got a, we've got an awesome group of guys at the shop. Um, one, one thing, you know, and this might bore a lot of people, but a job shop is, is always a grind, um, you know, and, mm -hmm. and today in today's world, 
a lot of times most of the workers want to do the same thing every day. They don't want to grind every day. They don't want to think every day. They want to be on their phone or, you know, talk to somebody. And you can't do that in a job shop. Um, so that, so, that one hit close to home tape. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's just, it's just the way it is. Um, yeah. the job shop is dying. Um, you know, it, it stinks, but, um, you know, it's. There, there's always going to be a demand for job shops. But the, the issue that I'm seeing is finding the, the people, it's not even skilled enough, but the people that care enough to, to, to work in something like that. You right. know, I, I, I'd rather have an employee that I have to teach what a wrench is and what a screwdriver is than somebody that, you know, has 12,000 followers on the gram because they, they're doing this all freaking day and not paying attention to anything else going on around them. And it's absolutely terrible that we can't find people like that nowadays. Right. And, and like I said, we've got some, most of our employees, the turnover rate, you know, running what we do now, of course, everybody in the shop loves it, you know, they think it's the coolest thing ever. But um, now that we have the cycle, for the most part, smoothed out and they know they have to make so many parts a week, you know, the stress level goes down on employees. So, you know, it's just a lot easier to keep guys around, you know, for a while, if somebody made it a year, you know, you were pretty tickled. Um, mm -hmm. You know, now I'm pretty sure everybody in the shop's been there for over five years. So um, I can't think of one person, you know, there, we have one guy maybe three or four years, but for the rest, for the most part, everybody else has been there over five years. And that's, that's awesome. So I see Greg smirking. I can't see who's writing something, but somebody's got to be. So, what is wrong with my hair? This is the same haircut I've had for like the past like five years. <laughs> Do I need to brush it or something? <laughs> so I got Hay and, and, and P. Winky and Swanee over here talking crap on my haircut. <laughs> I would have never expected out of those two guys. They call me the state. I don't even know what Jen oh just said. Oh my god! <laughs> I said you have to read the comments. Oh my god! I'm going to find a hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh Ryan, hey, I love you. Oh my god. Okay, um, what are the lives are on there that <laughs> we want to oh. read? Oh, Prentice Wink said hi to all three of us. Baby Wink said hi to all of us, as well as Ashley Wink. Um, um Roderick said he needs more impacts. They're they're like crack. Um he need you can't just have one, you need like two or three or four, maybe. Is that Roderick? Riley. Yeah. Hey Roderick. Uh I've got one at the shop right now with his name on it. So it'll be soon, Roderick. Uh Richard Luna said no matter how big or busy Tate gets, he and Impact still treat you like family. Man, I try my best. You know, I do fail sometimes with customers if they ask a open-ended question on email. But you know, I try. I try my best. You know, I, you know, in the long run, and I, I don't do it. You know, to be like a sales guy, I do it because I care about what we do and people. But you know, it, people appreciate it when you respond to their emails. If somebody asks me a question about our product, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it. If it 24 seven. If I wake up at 1:30 in the morning. I've got a fresh email. I'm going to, I'm going to answer right then and there. Um, you know, and it, it helps. I get Richard is, is really nice and always, you know, um, you know, is very appreciative of answering, but, you know, we're pretty lucky to have customers like that too, that are appreciative. But, you know, when you answer, answer emails quick, guys really appreciate that. Um, I've heard horror stories, but I try not to be that horror story. What other comments other than Swanee likes to hug Tate? Something about cheesecake. And Greg's hair. <laughs> yeah, I think I got all the live. I think. So anyway, we were talking about people that, that shoot your actions. Um, and I know you, uh, um, you know, you go and look at what the pros use and impact is way up there or the top or something. I don't remember. I was supposed to look at that before that. But it sounds like pretty much a lot of the people at the top of the game are, are shooting your actions. Um, how many, like, championships and stuff has, has have Impact Actions taken recently? Six out of the last seven. Um, Damn. Um, I actually – I don't 
make Facebook posts about it a lot, but you know, when we set out, you obviously want to make good products, but it's so nice seeing them win. And this year in the PRS, there were, there were 17 wins with impacts and 14 with every other manufacturer combined. So um, three more wins than everybody else combined. So um, that's pretty awesome to see, honestly. Yeah, there, there's a lot of really great products out there, but I don't think that there's any other product that has such a high winning percent as, as the impact actions do. Whether it's scopes or chassis or stocks or anything, I don't think there's anybody that's kind of dominating their com competition the way you guys are, which is just freaking awesome. Impacts are just everywhere now. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember like I started this, what, in 2018, so almost three years ago. And it was like, I mean, there were some out there. I mean, y'all were out there, but not like now. Like now, there it seems like everybody has an impact. Sure. No, it, I don't even know how to, you know, like I said, sometimes I'm driving down the road and you just get, you know, I'm not going to say emotional, but, you know, it just kind of feeling comes over and you're like, man, we've just been blessed. Like, there's really no other way to put it. You know, when we started out, you know, it's a, it takes an extremely large amount of money to get started and the momentum going your way. And um, one thing we've done this year is, is supported matches in the Southeast. And I don't know if that has, you know, a lot to do with it or what, but um, the shooters have just been awesome. Awesome, especially your way, um, the boom that's happened recently, for sure. So we do have a serious question comment. So Eddie wants to know, and Regina agrees that she wants to know also, are you guys going to make your muzzle breaks again? Um. N no, um, I would, I would like to, and I wish I could get more information on that, but we're not going to anytime soon. Um, um, you know, right. We, we, we used to make muzzle brakes, obviously those guys know about it. Um, and it got to where we were not making actions on machines to finish muzzle brakes. And that's just a no, you know, no win situation there. So we just decided to make actions and, and mind our own business and, let everybody else make muzzle breaks. So I do have some ideas, but my worst fear, you know, we've been pretty successful making just a few part numbers, um, a few variations. And it seems like every time I try to widen that footprint, it, it kinks up something on my normal stuff and it just doesn't make sense. You know, I got customers rely on our actions month after month. And the last thing I want to do is put them behind me because I'm, you know, working on something different. So as much as I'd like to, not right now. You just let down a bunch of people. They're all sad now. <laughs> I know, but they're not going to be sad when they know what's coming. So Ooh. I just, I just can't say, I wish I, I, I know that that's what you're not supposed to do, but I just can't say. Well, when it comes time to say, if you want to do a breaking news release on TSM, just let me know. Okay. I will. I will, I will do that. <laughs> you'd, be the, you'd be the first people I tell. We can, we can put it all over the shooter's mindset page. There you, go. there you go. We'll just go live from where, wherever we're at. Um, we have two other um, good lives. Rudy wants to know if Impact makes or plans to make a quick change feature for your actions. Um, no. Um, the quick change feature, as far as barrel swaps, I'm assuming? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know... I personally don't feel, and, and I don't know how else to put this, but most of the shooters that are shooting actions that offer a quick change are not using the quick change. They're torquing them on. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the new feature in the new action is to more cater to torquing them on. Um, I get the benefit of having a quick change. Um, AI's got the quick change down better than anybody. Actually, they're the only people that have it down, um, quite frankly. But we're not going to jeopardize um, reliability or accuracy or workability on a quick change. It doesn't take more than three minutes to swap a barrel out um, in a barrel vise. So I don't see any need, um, you know, to change that, to, to add on, to open up a can of, you know, problems we don't need. So. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of people that have the quick change option but still do it just like you said i mean i feel mm -hmm. like yeah. i feel like people do it anyway sounded cool Good. yeah sean um, wants to know are you being quiet like a hint 
I don't know what I'm being quiet like, but uh, I shouldn't have said anything. And I get slapped by my wife a lot of times whenever I have a buddy tell me a secret and I can't tell her. So I just opened it, but y'all just walked me right into that trap right there. So. <laughs> can't help it. So I think I think the people that like our break, um, I will I will go ahead and say this. I think the people that like our break, um, our break's very effective. Um, uh, Cal's in at uh, what the pros use did testing a while back, and our break as far as recoil reduction wasn't as quite as good of actual felt recoil reduction, but staying on target, it was pretty effective. And I think he had a list of 10 or 12 or 15 muzzle brakes, and it was way up on the list. And when you averaged it, it was one of like the top three or four muzzle brakes performance. Um, there were a couple of reasons why we didn't make a three port, but I think, you know, our brake is a little bit wider than normal and keeps a lot of the blast off the shooter's head. And I think just the happy medium of having decent recoil reduction, staying on target and being easy on the shooter is part of the reason it was uh, popular. Um, and, you know, I'd like to, there's going to be another product out soon that matches that. So um, anyway, um, hint, hint, hint. <laughs> William wants to know what the time frame is for the next, um, run of left-hand actions man i will be shipping left-handed actions by the end of next week so what let's see did we hit five uh yeah we hit five we hit we didn't say a number but a lot all right i think it's about time we have some big exciting stuff greg you want to hit the next thing yeah so we we have a giveaway um for 50 percent off of a jtech class um but before we go ahead and do the drawing tate you want to tell us like a, a quick little bit about what this jtech class is going to be like how awesome it's going to be <laughs> uh, is it for the beginner class or for the advanced class uh it says 50 percent off of a jtech class okay so we started a beginner class mainly because the demand was reaching out um on the beginner class um you know i never dreamed anybody would want to come listen to us, um, especially with my, my buddies that are part of that. They're pretty cocky guys. They're all good guys, but they're pretty cocky. But anyways, um, our beginner class is going to, is going to, you know, take a guy that doesn't even know how to, you know, collect data or, or start up his ballistic app on his phone or, you know, something from the bare minimum, torque a scope on, make sure your gun's shooting, um, you know, check velocity, 100 yards zero and show them how to work on their gun out. Um, the benefit of the JTAC class is we have four instructors that pretty much know what they're doing, you know, on everything. Um, so, you know, the beginner class, I think we're, we took 12 guys. Um, you know, if eight guys are on this trail over here, um, three guys can go with them and, you know, we can pull an instructor off and go to the side if somebody's, you know, you know, is lagging behind everybody else to make sure they catch up. Um, the advanced class, um, you know, we, we, joke, we joke about fundamentals um, a lot, but the advanced class is really a mental mindset um, one thing I feel like we teach and teach well is a mental mindset going in, um, how to think about what's important um, while you're shooting and what's not important. Because we all know when time starts now, we get done and you think about a lot of stuff that really doesn't matter and may miss some stuff that does matter. Um, so I feel like um, having the four instructors in the class, um, we really break up and branch out and, and rotate instructors. So you're hearing four different ways, you know, of every, every aspect of the game. And, you know, everybody, not everybody um, receives information the same way. And, you know, I could tell you something and Austin could tell you something and Clay could tell you something that doesn't click. And then Justin tell you and boom, it clicks in your head. Um, you know, so that, that's one of the benefits of the JTEC class. We, we try to feed the guys good. They all get, usually get a prime rib or a ribeye by Clay's dad. He's starting to make a name for himself on the, on the grill. Um, but anyway, we have a lot of fun. We shoot from daylight to dark. Uh, we're there till guys want to leave, so. I don't know if I hit all the hospitals. It might be because there's four of y'all saying it different ways, or it might just be that we have to hear it four times before it sinks in. <laughs> it may be. And the it lucky one right. that happens to be the fourth one that says it is the one that it actually like finally sinks through our thick skulls. It, it may be, you know, and you know, you could take our class, you could take, you know, a VP precision class, you could take class from Gym C, you go to Altus, you go to K and M, you're gonna pick something up from everybody. Um, there's no doubt about mm -hmm. it. And I think you could come to our class three times and, you know, go to the other classes three times, you're going to, if you're wanting to learn, there's gonna, just going to be things that, you know, don't necessarily come second nature to you. Um, the first class, second class they do. And, you know, 
like I said earlier, when times when the buzzer start or when time starts now, um, you know, you forget about some things. And um, the more the mentally prepared you are, the more your mind's thinking on the task at hand instead of, you know, all the other what ifs or um, variables that go on. And, you know, just cross training everywhere. Um, Rick Reeves last year um, told us he's act actually Rick Reeves, if you want to get down to it, is the one that um, helped start JTAC. He, he literally sent us a text message and he goes, you, he basically said, I'm going to change his words, but you guys are idiots. If you don't start training, I'm going to put a class together and you're going to teach it. Tell me how much. And that's literally how the first class started. <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, he came and he said, man, I'm going to go to one person's class a year. This is your class next year. I may go to, you know, I don't remember if he said Jake and pinches or K and M or what, but you know, his, his mindset is the right mindset where you can go learn from everybody. Um, you know, everybody can learn from everybody. One thing good about that class for me is it's like a class every class because, you know, even we're learning stuff every class. So as long as you have an open mind and go willing to learn, you're going to get better. I think one of the best ways to learn is to teach. Mm -hmm. It is. You have to be careful and not get in a rut because of the, some of the long-term teachers, their shooting goes down. And, and I think, you know, I don't really know. You could probably – you could probably blame that on a lot of things, but, you know, you can't always think my way is the high, you know, highway kind of deal. You always got to be trying to evolve and get better. If somebody's beating you, figure out why they're beating you, you know, mm -hmm. and try to, you know, try to figure it out. So, you know, one thing that's funny about Clay and Austin, I'm sorry, uh, Justin and Clay, and I want to make fun of them, but man, they're all the time trying to keep secrets from me and Austin. I don't know if we ever said that out loud, but it's true. They're always trying to find better ways to do stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you kind of got to listen in with your earbuds to kind of hear what they're saying. But, um, heck, Justin was telling students something the other day and he'd never even told me. And I was like, man, I think I might try that, you know, and it's like, okay. <laughs> one, one thing about it is all, for, all of us in that class, it's like another competition teaching. So like when we get done with that class, we want guys to beat us. Um, we want, we want to see progress and everybody there, there are no secrets when you come to that class, we give it, everything that we get um it's kind of fun because we see shooters of all levels and uh you know we had a couple of guys leave the class last time and we really shook our heads and we're like man that guy's gonna be a pain in our rear next year like because you know, <laughs> he's just gonna be so good we had one that made the ag cup right yeah adam robinson he actually took and made it to day three he made it to day three he, he's gonna be a stud next year um he's got it he just does he's got it mentally um you know he's a good guy too Really like Adam. I shot with him. I believe I shot with him all three days at the AG Cup. But, um, but yeah, he's a perfect example. That's awesome. And I've, I've heard from several higher level shooters that I trust just how awesome this training is. So without further ado, we're going to let somebody have 50% off of one of these trainings. As, as I remember how to share my screen. Take me. You you are not allowed, Jennifer. I've already told you because I tried to enter too. All right, so I have a list of everybody that is entered, and I'm going to hit a random number now. Seventeen, which is Joe Krizan. They are our Joe is our winner. Um, Joe, if you're listening now, shoot me a PM and we'll get your prize over to you. Figure out how to claim that, but congratulations on that. <clears throat> Congrats, Joe. Mike Bell wants to know when is the next JTAC podcast? <laughs> um, he really enjoyed that. Maybe we just need to have a JTAC podcast with all of y'all. Oh, that'd be a lot to handle. I'm not much of a podcast guy. I got a feeling those guys will be doing a lot of them without me. But um, we actually, I didn't actually listen to the first one. Um, I listened to everybody else's, but I didn't listen to ours. Um, but apparently there were some issues with the sound and um, Clay got some fancy recording equipment in and actually come in today or yesterday. So um, there'll be a JTAC um, podcast, I would imagine in the next two weeks. Um, we have a, our next class is uh, January 15th and 16th, I believe. Uh, we're doing a beginner class. We're going to do a couple there. So anywho, won't be long. Clay's kind of the driver of that deal. He's the, he's a technology guy. Y'all should do some East coast. JTAC classes. We can make it happen. They call us, we'll go. So we actually have one set up in Kansas, I believe. What's your number? I'll call you. 
<laughs> I'm telling you what, everybody wants to get there to it. All right, that is super exciting. Do, do we want to do our other giveaway at the same time or wait? Yeah, let's do that and like, let's do that. So right. this is like an epic show because we don't have just one giveaway, we have two. Yeah, so right as we were going live, <clears throat> uh, Brian Conley from Hunter's HD Gold messaged me and uh, he told me, hey, give away a certificate for a free set of Hunter's HD Gold glasses, which if you guys haven't tried those out, you definitely should. I'm blind as a bat. Not quite as blind as Jen, but I'm pretty blind. Um, and I can see all sorts I of stuff. I hit more targets than you. <laughs> Debatable. But uh, anyway, so he told us we're giving away a certificate for a free set of glasses. Um, and he said, do something super simple. So the first person in the comments that types Hunter's HD gold are the best wins the glasses. Got to be spelled correctly. I'm watching. My computer's super slow. Really, nobody's typed <laughs> this by now. I know, really. I could have typed it by now, and I'm like running a show. Ah. Uh, oh, there we go. Brandon Rudge won. Now okay. the whole feed yeah. is that. <laughs> yeah, but he came through first. <laughs> uh, let's see. Brandon, shoot me a PM with uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's funny. Effie not a correct. Shoot me a PM with your um, um, name, address, and your email address. And I'll get that sent over to Brian and we'll get you your cert for a free set of awesome glasses. That's awesome. All right, well, back to impact because that's what we're talking about tonight. Oh, impact. Um, so what sets impact actions apart? Like if I was looking at all of the different actions, what would make me go to impact versus any of the other competitors? Um, well, so as far as a match action, you know, obviously we do 90 degree throw. Um, there's other actions do 60 degree throw. So if a 60 degree throw is your jam, you know, it's probably not an impact. Um, as far as the 90 degree throws, um, you know, back in 2015, 14, 15, um, we were the first manufacturer that set out and guaranteed headspace um, on all the assemblies. And to my knowledge, I've never seen one out that doesn't meet um, the tolerances that we hold. Um, I personally um, assemble and function check and final. Um, I have a final checklist there that I measure several different features on the action. Um, I personally do that myself. I run every action on the table. I make sure it operates how it should, feels how it should. Um, you know, since then there have been other manufacturers, um, you know, offer the prefits and guarantee the headspace. Um, so that didn't really set us apart anymore. Um, the bolt to bolt board clearance for the game that we play um, in field matches or any kind of dirty environment, um, without a doubt, um, probably makes it cycle better. Uh, we don't have any fancy features on the action. We don't have any, you know, prototype, you know, fancy stuff on it. Um, Wade, when we started, he just said he was a mud and dirt kind of guy. He wanted, when we first started, Wade brought like, I don't even know, 20 actions and set them on the table. And he was like, this is good on this one. It never breaks. I've never seen one break. I see this break all the time. We're not going to do that. So basically we just tried to make the most reliable receiver we could. And so far it's been, you know, we've been pretty successful at that. So, um, you know, the fact that I put everyone together, you're not going to get a surprise out of the box. Um, I cycle everyone, it comes fully assembled. So whether you get a prefit from us, a prefit from Joe Walls at Exodus, Travis Stevens, you know, there's just a number of guys um, doing prefits now. You're going to be able to take that action out of the box, know that it works, screw barrel on it, um, and you're not going to get any surprises out of the box. Now, I know that's how it's supposed to go. That's how it goes with an impact. Um, second is if you have any problems, um, it's me you talk to. There's not a sales guy. There's not a returns guy. You know, it's me you talk to. So I feel like that's pretty important. Now, luckily, we don't have very many problems. So that's how come I can still handle that job. You know, if we had a lot of problems, I'd probably have to hire somebody from that. But, um, you know, and Wade was in the community. 
Um, there's, you know, there's other hunter actions, you know, the defines anti real lightweight action. You know, we don't really make anything like that yet. So um, as far as what we make, we're actually in the game. Uh, I shoot, you know, almost every weekend. Um, you know, if we hear anything we need to change, we'll, we'll tweak it. But, um, you know, really the, and I'm not bragging on myself, but, you know, we really try to take care of our customers and, and feed them parts. I hope there's comments popping up. You're laughing, not me. But uh, it's comments. Look, so Adam Robinson, who we talked about earlier, I don't know if you heard it, Adam, you'll have to rewind it, said, third. can't wait to get my impacts. I bought them after spending one day talking to Tate. And then Clay writes, great. Adam just got harder to beat. <laughs> it just made me laugh. You know, there's other there's other great actions out there, um, you know, in, in, in that note. Um, but, you know, one thing you get with us is you know what you're getting when you get it. Um, then if you ever did have a problem or have any questions, I'm the guy you're talking to. So that, that should mean something, you know. I will say, like, I mean, I think that the quality is definitely there on y'all's actions. I'm not saying that it's not. It is definitely there and proven. But I think that the fact that you're a shooter and you're at the matches and you're talking to people. Um, I think people really want to support you and want, you know, they want to use your product because you're a shooter and you're there and you're so involved with it. I agree. And, you know, I, I love being out. I love it. I really do. I love the people. I, I joke with people and I, you know, talk trash to people. I love everything. And, you know, I've got a two year old and a six year old now and, and, you know, really, Brecken was born actually my second PRS match ever when I came home. Um, Wendy told me she was pregnant. So for most of my shooting career, I've had a kid or she's been pregnant. But, you know, this is really a lifestyle uh, for me now. And I've started, as you know, I've started taking the family. She basically just jumped on. It, it, it's hard. You know, sometimes I, I work a lot and I'm gone on the weekends. Y'all know if you go to match on Saturday and Sunday, you're prepping. Well, I don't load my own ammo. Clay does now. But I'm still packing my bag, making sure everything's there. Thursday, go run my gun out, you know, Thursday. Traveling Friday, I hardly ever stay overnight on Sunday to match. So I'm driving all night back. So really, you're Thursday to Monday, you know, and it's been Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and half of Thursday getting ready again. But we really, you know, my wife's really been supportive, and we kind of just decided we, we bought a camper to tow around, kind of like the Truitts, and, you know, make it a family deal. So um, I want to be in this game for a long time. And, um you know, not that I, I really like the atmosphere, but I think that that's important to be out and be active. I loved seeing the whole family at the AG Cup. That was fun. Well, I'm glad you did. It kind of made me a little nervous. I don't know. <laughs> it was actually the Truett's kid that made the biggest mess and wound up uh -huh. with all his clothes off. I think y'all probably remember that. I mean, we were like <laughs> videoing live and there's a naked kid and it was like, oh, let's move the camera view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was cold, and they were playing in a mud puddle like it was summer and 100 degrees outside. Yeah, it was awesome. No, but it was really, it was really neat to see the family side of you, the family guy side, because, you know, we'd go back to the lodge and sit down, and your kids are crawling up on you, and it, it was just neat to see. I, I really enjoyed that at the AG Cup, that everybody's kids were there, and, you know, that was nice. Right. When they first, we first started taking them, I didn't know how it was going to be, you know, accepted. And since then, Shannon's actually said, man, I think it's cool. You know, one of my kids actually ran down range at a match. I'm blaming it on uh, Amy Truett because some trash blew down range. And she, she told him to get it, not knowing that it was about to blow down range. They actually had to stop a lot. It was kind of, you know, and I'm trying to shoot through all this, you know. I'm like, man, that's my kid, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But, man, everybody kind of accepts it. And I think since then, honestly, um, you know, more people, you see more wives, you know, it matches and, and more family it matches. And I think it's a good thing. Um, I really do. Because most of the time, you know, dad's gone on the weekend, but now if the family goes, it's kind of like a family vacation. So, Yep. It's cool. Some of the places I've traveled, I wish I'd stay a day or two after or before, make a vacation out of it. And Because, you know, you, you fly in, you go to the match, you fly back out, you don't get to see the area. Like when I came to Oklahoma, I didn't get to see any of Oklahoma. I came in, shot the finale, and then was gone so right. well the weather mm -hmm. wasn't really the best sightseeing weather no that weather oh <laughs> gosh i'm still frozen it was bad it should, but like two days later it was 70 degrees yeah i know i heard i was like dude that's not even funny that's yeah. awful and then you bought the cold back here 
I got made fun of because of how bundled I was, but it's okay. You did kind of look like the Michelin man. I do not care. Tate, uh, Sean wants to know who has a better pull, you, your kids or Clay? Better trigger pull, your kids or Clay? Well, all jokes aside, it'd be a toss up between me and my kid. Um, And Clay is without a doubt the worst. Um, (laughs) That's not even a joke. Everybody's going to laugh, but he's horrible. But he, but he's a smart shooter and, you know, with, he just, he's obviously good, but uh, man, so it's kind of funny you say that I started my boy shooting probably two years ago on a 22. And when I first started, Wade didn't let his boys shoot shotguns when they were younger because he didn't want them to develop a splinch. So I kind of copied that. And, you know, we have guns hanging around in multiple corners of my house. So I want my kids to, you know, be safe around them and stuff like that. But when I started shooting, started him out on a 22, um, I actually put my finger on the trigger and then he had to pull, pull my finger. Um, so he could never actually touch it himself. And I kind of thought that was going to be a safety um, that he could never shoot a gun by himself. But man, I've got videos of him following through and like shot after shot after shot that are just amazing. But the deal was if he ever yanked one and flinched, I put, we put the gun up and that sounds mean, but Oof. you know, it got to where he could shoot 20 shots and they were all good, but I really didn't want him to just shoot just to shoot. Um, but I wanted him to make every shot count and really purposeful. So um, anyway, since then, I know a couple of other guys that actually do that with their kids. I think it, I think it's a pretty good deal. I mean, you teach a kid at six years old that he can't flinch and he's got to follow through every shot. I mean, it's, it can't do anything to help later on. So That's I'm not true. making fun of Clay's dad, but Clay's dad did not do that when he was younger. <laughs> Clay says that it's his kids because it isn't even close. So... <laughs> <laughs> he admits it so it mike mike bell um is a friend of mine that lives here mm-hmm. local hey mike come shoot nrl 22 i told you i'll help you out but you can he, shoot wants that, mike. Know, he wants to know what caliber recommendation for a beginner at prs oh if you're gonna buy factory ammo you know six creed's really hard to beat um you know we could have the caliber debate for a while i run a 6br if you're gonna reload it's super easy um mild recoil um it, you just almost can't mess it up and um you know six five creed any of that's fine um you know i get asked all the time is a six five okay i don't think i think you could take any of the top shooters um i looked earlier and i think nine out of the top 10 at least nine out of the top 10 are running br base cartridges uh, this year it's not necessarily that but i think you know, you could take those good shooters and put us, put them in a six, five and they're, they're not going to fall to the bottom of the list. But I think once you start getting to the top 15%, that you really get an advantage of the six over the six, five, but you know, a beginner, I would just have to go with a six creed would probably be what I, what I would bet just because of the availability of factory ammo. Well, that's kind of a joke right now, but you know what I mean? Well, the availability of anything is yeah. a joke right now. Yeah. Can't find powder. Can't find primers right mary yeah. olivier still has my primers she drove them home from oklahoma for me she probably bought your second five thousand didn't she you probably <laughs> bought five and then she got you five <laughs> i just got one of the i can't remember how many it was it wasn't much oh, the prize on the table. Prize table? Mm-hmm. Yeah. but i was, was like awesome. i can't fly with this um no, I only got one box when it was my turn to walk. I didn't do the whole let's go rape the prize table and elbow everybody, make it look like Black Friday and be obnoxious. I didn't do that. Are you talking about Ron Hay? I heard he was throwing bricks of primers at people. Yo, anybody that wants to throw bricks of primers at me, throw as hard as you want. I'm open. I, I agree. I'm just jealous. I'm not mad. I'm just jealous that I wasn't there to catch them. Yeah. So, you know, Magneto Speed and Kestrel kind of did a thing, right? You know, Kestrel always does their little classes. And I happened to be working from home one day and I was like, I'm going to take this new Magneto speed class with Ryan Hay and Katie. And Hay comes on screen and there is a wall of freaking primers behind him. I'm like, dude, like hard flex there. Can I have some? Just as long as they don't blow. (laughs) Yeah. Love you, Ryan. (laughs) Uh... (laughs) So let's talk a little bit about the AG Cup. You shot in it this year and did quite well. Um, did you? Sh- I think you shot it in 2019, also, didn't you? 
I did, yes. So what are your thoughts on this year versus last year and the different formats? Um, you know, last year they invited the top 20 uh, or what they thought was a top 20. Uh, for the most part, it was spot on. And, you know, I will never take anything away from Tom. I think he created a good thing. Um, no matter the 20 you pick, there's always going to be somebody complaining, you know, about they didn't get picked. Well, one, one way he solved that this year was letting 50 in. And a lot of the people that were mad they didn't get picked still didn't shoot. So it was kind of funny to see that. But um, the only thing that made it a little bit more cutthroat this year is that you had to bring it every day. And there were some of the best shooters in the country not make it past day one because they had a bad day. Um, you know, so that was, that was interesting. Last year was more of a relaxing um, event, knowing you were going to at least finish um, this year. You know, last year, knowing you were going to be there both days, I tried to go for speed. And it ended up biting me because the match was harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, this year, you know, every I knew every shot was going to count because, you know, out of those 50 guys, you know, you could have a, you know, unlimited number of variable variations of who was going to make the, you know, top 22 or whatever they took. Um, so I went in it this year with just hit as many targets I could, take my time, get my shots off. But it was definitely more cutthroat knowing you had to bring it every day to make it to day three. You know, the shoot was a real thing. So um, I don't think know, I've um, ever seen all of y'all, and I say y'all meaning all of the shooters of that caliber that made it to AG Cup. I don't think I've ever seen y'all collectively as a group shoot as tentatively as the shots there. That's probably right. Um, I was fortunate that I, I just shot Blah all weekend. I never fought that red line. Um, you know, I never did anything great, but I never had a bad stage. And uh, I never had to go look at that cutthroat line. Um, but it would be, it was kind of nerve wracking watching it for other people. Um, it was cool. I liked how they did it. You know, we shot, for the guys that don't know, um, every other stage we basically shot. Uh, if one group is on, you know, stage one, the other group shooting six, and you swap two and, you know, or whatever. You, you flip flop shot the same stages. So every two stages you had the same score or, or the same possible points and shot the two stages. So you could kind of see where you rated. Um, you know, every well, other and stage. he made he made those two stages similar stages. Like so he much did. thought went into it. It wasn't like, um, you know, this squad is shooting a positional, little fast and you know close targets stage, and then over here you're shooting 1,200 yards. You know, and the, and yeah. it, the conditions he wanted it so that like both squads shot the 1,200 yard or a thousand, it was a thousand, but the thousand yard um, stages at the same time so that the conditions were similar. Yeah. Um, so that if the wind was, you know, picked up a little bit more in the afternoon, both of those were shot in the afternoon and then flip flopped, you know, so you, it made it a lot more fair, I felt like, versus some matches, which you can't really fix, but there's some matches that's like, man, they got to shoot, you know, like Oklahoma for the finale, day one was completely different than day two. So, yeah. It was, and, you know, stage – what do you do about it? You can't ever fix it, you know, you stage can't. one through mm -hmm. six, you know. Doesn't matter how hard it's blown, you know, it's kind of a similar difficulty. But, you know, you're right. Tom did – he put a lot of thought into it. I and mean, some guys didn't like it, but I thought it was about as fair as he could have made it, mm -hmm. um, you know, shooting those stages back to back. But it was, it was really fun. Tom always makes you feel like you're the best, you know, some of the best shooters in the country when you're there. Um, he does a really good job at that. But, you know, that, that match really – it's got more pressure than the PRS finale if you want to get down to it, it seems like. Um, well, there's kind of, money on the line. There's money on the line. Just money at the, fin the PRS finale, too, but it's kind of not as instant. You know, the PRS, the real money's in the season, which takes a year of dedication. Um, mm -hmm. but, but you're right, a lot of money on the line. So, you know, I think through six stages, Austin and I were deadlocked, you know, and we're sitting here like, man, this could really happen, you know, and then before you know it, I'm dropping one, two, and, Anyway, you pulled ahead, but um, having that much money on the line, I never did really let it get to me, um, you know, but it was at the end of day one, when you made it, you're like, man, I got a shot, you know, and at the end of day two, man, I got a shot, but, um, you know, it's important that there, and I, I think you're right. There were a lot of people shooting different. There were definitely more nerves at this one than the last one, I believe. How much, how nerve wracking was the shoot off? Because like I was standing back there when you, well, I can't remember. Exactly. But the last stage when you were shooting, I was like, 
if he gets an eight, he'll tie and it'll go to a shoot off. And I'm trying to be quiet back there because I'm like, I really don't want to screw him up by saying whatever I'm saying. But it did come down to a shoot off with you and Dave Preston. How nerve wracking was that with like, what was it, 30 or 40 people like crowded around watching? Man, honestly, and I, I mean this honestly, I wasn't even nervous at all. And I doubt Dave was too. Those are all our buddies. So it may be different if you're like, you know, in a golf tournament, you don't know the crowd, but they're all our buddies. So it was just another, another stage. So uh, it was, it was fun for sure. But anyway, I, I don't, I don't feel like I was that nervous. Um, I played college. I played a lot of junior golf and D2 college golf. I remember a tournament in particular, I tied for first place and first hole we both buried the second hole. I hit a hosel rocket. I mean, like 50 is a dog leg left with trees on both sides. And I literally just, shanked it to the left and I can remember I was just nervous I ended up closing my eyes and punching through out into the fairway like 90 out or something and, and, and ended up getting a bogey but he got a bogey and uh I was like man being nervous didn't do me any good so I was kind of like a grip it and rip it kind of mentality after that and it's kind of it took a lot it took several of those playoffs being nervous and I don't know what I don't know what actually clicked in but I don't really get nervous the only thing I get nervous with is a pistol but I don't really get nervous with a rifle so I've kind of got a up there i don't really get first stage jitters or anything it's just let's do it so who'd you play who'd you play golf yeah. for um east central university in oklahoma here this is division two but um anyway you take a pistol and you tell me i have to hit that a target five times out of five shots i'm not going to hit it five times out of five shots i do have the yanks with a pistol if i get 10 shots i'm probably going to hit it in five shots but if you tell me i have to hit every time i don't know what it is but i got a mental block there so kind of funny that is funny you'd be jealous probably to know that i like could walk to augusta national yeah out my front well, door well how many yards yeah. is it i don't know Say like 500 yards i'm only like uh, 500 really? yards from the gates of augusta national where i live right really? now really man i don't play much anymore i played actually i played before some golf tournaments i mean some shooting matches now and uh you know we'll meet up on friday and play probably done that four or five times it's hard to play serious when you've been decent at it and you don't practice. It's a very aggravating game um, when you're not good at it. So, and you know how you used to do it and you can't do it anymore. That's, that's mm -hmm. the stage I'm in right now. So, but anyways. <laughs> Getting older sucks. <laughs> Getting older does suck. All right. Do you have a live one, Greg? Yes. Um, <clears throat> So Joshua asked, he said, what would you recommend since Varget is available for 6GT? So I'd say what I'm using since I don't have Varget is I'm using Shooter's World Precision. Um, I've actually, I got a pound of Precision, a pound of Varget, and I've had better results out of the Precision the whole time, all, all season. I've been shooting the GT. Um, it's in stock pretty much any place that carries it. I know I could buy it here locally. So that's that's what I'm using for my GT. I'm not sure if you got something different that you'd use, Tate. Man, I'll be honest with you. I don't know anything about batters anymore. I just send it all to Clay. So my first suggestion would be go to Clay. <laughs> but, um, I mean, honestly, but, you know, all jokes aside, the shooter's world, I, that'd probably be what I'd try, mainly because you see them supporting the sport. And, you know, people. some people say that, and, you know, some people may think there's too much weight put on that, but. And those companies are donating, you know, product, you know, to the shooters because they want to help the sport. They don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, and I do try. As, the older, when I first started shooting, I didn't really put much merit in that. But the more along I get, the more I want to use those products. So I would definitely probably shoot it, you know, use Shooters World. Matt Utroska runs Shooters World Powder, and it can't be too bad because he's, you know, doing well. So um, that'd probably be the first thing I'd try, too, after I called Clay. Yeah, I uh... – I fully agree, and I've I've used Shooters World because I get, they're they're located probably an hour and a half north of us. My local range here, Shooters of Augusta, they stock all of the powder. Um, it's always in stock. It's a little bit cheaper than everything. They have something that's comparable to everything else, and I've never had issues with um, with my gun shooting bad. Right. I was, I, I was my gun always outshoots me. Now that might just be that I suck at shooting, which is more than likely, but. The guns always shoot pretty decent. Well, that's a little handy little honey hole you have there, stocks powder. Mm-hmm. So Chris apparently is somewhat local to us. Um, he's asking for places to shoot around Augusta. 
So obviously, Shooters of Augusta and Sharpshooters of Augusta are are two local outdoor, indoor and outdoor ranges. Um, they only go out to about 200 yards on the outdoor. We have Fort Gordon. Um, you can go in there. You got to go to the MP station, fill out some paperwork, blah, 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 blah. But they got a 980 yard range right here in town. Um, there's the range at Camp David. That's kind of a private thing. You can look them up on Facebook, but most of my practice shooting that I do um, drive up to Columbia and go to Panteo Sportsman Club. And they have a, uh, a a really awesome range out to 800 yards. Oh, and if you have a 22, come shoot my matches. Look up um, Pine Tucky NRL 22 on Facebook. Lots of places to shoot. Are the 22 matches picking up big time down there? Oh, yeah. So a couple of years ago, we had one place that would do, do them maybe quarterly. Um, but now I'm doing them um that place is doing i'm doing them almost monthly i'm definitely doing a monthly this year i think they're doing a monthly um and then some other little stuff coming up so in town we have two monthly 22 matches that's yeah. good for the shooters i think it's oh, yeah. good for getting the kids into it and it is mm -hmm. i sure. love bringing beginners to shoot a 22 match and watching them get all excited when the you know those first impacts at distance for a 22. Mike Bell says you need an impact 22 LR action. Ooh. I know um, I made a joke with somebody earlier that pray for me if I make a rimfire action because that means I'm not selling what I'm making. So, um, you know, I mean, and, you know, it's, it's, it's good to be able to say that, but, um, you know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and, and try to do it well and, you know, maybe maybe one day be able to expand to the rim fire. I'd like to, but it just doesn't make sense right now. So maybe one day. That would be good. Yeah, that would be cool. It's definitely picking up. Um, so what plans do you have for 2021? I mean, it's almost the new year. Everyone is so glad to tell 2020 to kiss our asses. And 2020, goodbye. suck it. Um, so now 2020 is going to turn 21 and be legal to drink. Um, so hopefully it's not a rough year next year, but what are your goals like for impact as well as, um, personally, as far as your personal shooting? Um, goals for impact, we're coming out with the new hunter action. that's round, um, it's lighter weight. It will be a little bit cheaper, um, for guys that don't necessarily shoot matches. Um, we're actually finishing up um, final touches to the program this week. That was our goal this week. And when we left this week, that was going to be fluid and hit the button, start, go. Um, so getting that hunting action out into the wild. Um, it takes the same bolts as our regular action, takes the same barrels as our regular action. Um, everything's plug and play. Um, and my personal goals um, kind of put me on the spot, but if I believe I can do it, I got to say it. But my personal goal is to win the Golden Bullet this year. Um, it's in a place where I believe suits me. I'm out West. Um, I'm definitely a field type, field match type shooter. And, you know, it sounds dumb, but I, I go to matches to have fun and shoot well and, you know, for the camaraderie, but I hardly ever go to win. And um, this year I'm going to try to do that. So uh, we'll see how it goes. It's so funny watching you shoot because you're very um, calm and just like, I mean, I it guess it goes back to you talking about in golf, not getting nervous because it doesn't help, but you're just kind of like, yeah, okay, I'm going to go up here and shoot. I'm going to just shoot the PRS barricade with my bipod. <laughs> it doesn't feel that way. It may seem that way, but in my head, there's a bunch of stuff going on. So um, I'm glad it looks that way. You look very calm, actually, when you shoot. Right. What is your first match? Um... Clay and I have a PRS match that we're, that we're match directing in the 1st of March. My plan is to take a big old break until after that match. So I'm going to shoot that match and proof it. Um, you know, I've been doing this seven years, um, 14, 15, 16, just straight. And um, that's kind of a grind. And, and I love it. Um, we're going to take some time off the kiddos and ride some dirt bikes. They're, they're big into dirt bikes now. I mean, we're going through gallons of gas. Your um, kids like dirt? Oh man, they're crazy. Um, rode them this morning. It was cold. They're barefoot out there riding. Uh, I think it was like low forties and out there barefoot. But um, 
I'm going to take some time off till, till at least after our match in March and just kind of do some recouping and getting everything back in order. And we're building a house right now, so that's going to keep you busy till then. So. That's stressful. It's very stressful. But, but anyway, I'm going to take a big old break and then hit it hard late March. So. Very nice. I don't even know what my first match is. I, I am shooting the greatest match. So, um, Greg, you know more about it. You talk. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll talk. So, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys know Robert Greatest, the, the rifle builder. He's local here to us. Um, he unfortunately passed away a few months back. Um, oh, no, you're putting me on the spot. Um, one weekend in January at GTI in Barnwell, South Carolina. Like the 23rd. Just, yeah, I think it's the weekend of the 23rd. Um, they're putting on a memorial match for him to benefit the, both the family and several um, veterans and mental health charities. Um, I don't have a full list of all that stuff yet. Um, just reminded myself I got a message somebody. Um, anyway, it's going to be a really cool match at GTI, which is probably the coolest place I've ever shot. It's an abandoned nuclear facility that was built and never commissioned. So they have like a 10 story tower. They have like 12 foot wide concrete pipes you got to run through. Um, they've had all sorts of awesome matches out there. Um, and it's going to be a great thing. Um, on Saturday is a train up day, um, specifically tailored to newer shooters. Um, if you are a new shooter, <clears throat> they'll hook you up with somebody to kind of coach you through, get you ready for the match on Sunday. There's going to be a big dinner that night. And then on Sunday, there's going to be a eight stage match, I believe or 10 something like that um but all the money's going for a good cause it's a really awesome place to go shoot um and if you come you could you get to hang out with me just saying sounds like a good time yeah and if any if anybody has any questions about that much um if you scroll down the page somewhere we've shared a couple links or just feel free to shoot me a message anytime and i'll did you say a 10-story tower yes you should totally elevator. come out here and shoot it tate not, I can't. I can't take a break if I come out in January. I mean, just like do a play fun gun and just. It's a I fun match. Come, I can maybe for, come. Oh, it it might be on the weekend of our training class. I can maybe come RO. It doesn't no, sound bad to get away from the cold. It's the weekend after your class. Oh, I got you. Well, be fun. I guess, I guess you put me on the spot. I mean, I got spare bedrooms. He's got spare bedrooms. Oh, oh hey, hey, I did think of a real reason. My wife's birthday is the 21st. So. Mm. <laughs> Damn, you just almost spit up your... That's the last yeah, thing you launcher. think about? You should have thought of that first, Tate. <laughs> Either the 21st or the 26th, something like that. But right in there. <laughs> right in there. Well, her mom's is one day and hers is the other day. So I just say happy birthday generically. But anyway, that's probably what I'll be doing. Oh my word! I think probably needs to be like and, definitely. And here, here's the bad part of this. I think it's a 26 now. That I think about it because my son was born. My, my second son was born on her birthday. So um, anyway, probably be doing something important there. I hope she doesn't watch this. She's probably watching it right now. Wendy probably. said 20, 26. It's <laughs> your child. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, I love you. I, I knew it was one of the two. I changed my I changed my answer towards the end. And he said busted. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's even worse than the day that I scheduled a match I was running on my mom's birthday. <laughs> that is pretty funny actually that that was live. <laughs> Goodness gracious alive. So are all of your class schedules out for the next year or just a um, couple? Oh, uh, so we're booked through February. Um, we have a March class open that I don't even know the weekend of yet. Um, it's out there, but March is open. They just tell me, they just let me know a couple of weeks ahead of time. So um, we have, I think it's the last week in March. Maybe Clay will chime in and, and say, but I think it's the last week in March that we have a class. My phone just like blew up. Oh, man. Okay. All right. You got any more live, Greg? Uh, Chad Glasscock wants to know if the hunter actions are long action or short action. I'm um, the short action right now, but the whole point of them, um, I would imagine most of them we're going to end up making will be long action. Um, 
but we're going to have both. But the, the ones we're finalizing this week, um, we've been messing with the bolt stop. Um, long story short, um, you know, we want to make our action where nobody can break it. And to my knowledge so far, um, nobody's broken a bolt stop. That's one of the reasons it's shrouded. It's a very robust design. I'm not the bolt stops break all the time, but they do break. Um, so we were really coming up with a bulletproof bolt stop because I never want I never want a customer to call me and say my bolt stop broke and I need a new bolt stop. Um, I've had customers order extra ones and I'm like, you're not going to need it, um, you know. But okay, I'll, I'll send you one. Um, but anyway, the bolt stops been what we work, worked on because on a round actually you don't have the same amount of material to work with. Um, but now that we have it nailed down, the long will be very shortly behind it. So I'd, I'd expect to start shooting long actions in the next 10 weeks, something like that. And are you uh, programming these at the machine or? Uh... No, no, no. This is the real <laughs> deal now. Now that we know, now that we know the stuff we like, um, you know, and the features we have in it, uh, we, we use the, the cat cam stuff. So that does make life a lot easier. Buddy wants to know if you shoot a straight VR. I do. I shoot a straight VR. Um, I used to shoot, actually, I started out, my first six millimeter was 6XC. I went to the 6 Creed, um, went to the Dasher, um, and the slower I kept. I used to think you couldn't compete with under 2950. Um, and with the better bullets um, and, and just gradually shooting slower, um, you know, guys were beating me shooting slower. Uh, I remember. I remember the first time I ever heard Jake Bibber was shooting like 2750. I thought he was lying. And uh, at the time I was probably shooting like 2950. <clears throat> but anyway, putting our head, you know, it's got to work, you know. So um, as I've dropped down, I went from Dasher to, to BRA. And now I'm, the reason I ended up with a BR is because Clay wouldn't size my brass anymore. And I despise reloading. So <laughs> I despise it. Um, but anyway, I ended up now I just get brass from OTM, send it to Clay, and he tells me when I'm out. So um, I'm shooting BR just for the ease of it. I, I don't. He send me, sends me ammo in the mail, and it's, it's easy. Same load every time, and it always shoots. So um, I think a BR is the easiest way to go. So. Um, Ruben wants to know what cam do you use in the shop? Master cam. We usually, we usually draw it up on SolidWorks and import it to Master Cam. <clears throat> Buddy wants to know what bullet. Um, I run, run the 110A tips. Um, I am sponsored Hornady Shooter, but even if I wasn't, I would buy the A tips. Um, I do believe in that bullet. Um, you know, and just to back that up, <clears throat> um, Clay back in 19 bought his bullets all year. Um, he liked them enough that he, you know, was willing to buy them. And then same story with Austin this year. It was kind of funny how it worked out, but Austin bought his bullets all year and ended up winning the golden bullet this year. But I really like the bullet. Um, it, it's really consistent. Um, and the best part about it is it, it leaves a white dot on the target a lot of times. So that's kind of handy. Very handy. I think we are caught up on lives. Greg, you got anything else? No, I, I am all good on my end. I think we can wind this down to shout outs. We'll start with you, Greg. Oh, crap. I don't have it up. <clears throat> all right. So we're going to start off with um, Shooter's World Powder. Again, you can actually find it, and it works really good, so it's awesome. Um, shooters and Sharpshooters of Augusta, both of our local indoor and outdoor ranges that also happens to stock Shooter's World Powder. PDC Custom for the most beautiful rifle, rifle chassis known to man. Um, and Hunter's HD Gold, again, because I'm blind and don't like being blind, so I wear glasses that let me see stuff. Awesome. Tate, you got any shout outs? Um, yeah. Um, you know, most people, I feel like most people know, but I run a foundation stock. Uh, most people know John Kyle and Amy. Um, they got an awesome family going and an awesome product going. Um, you know, I usually, I don't run anything that I wouldn't, you know, I actually buy all my stocks. So um, I usually buy stuff if I can. So there's not like that funny feeling, you know, going in there, like you feel like you have to run it, but um, the stocks just work. You know, one thing mentioned above, Amy prays with every stock before it goes out the door. Um, she really does that, you know, and I, they, they really care about the shooters and care about the sport. Um, so I run their stocks and I, I like them. 
Um, I run Hawkins Bottom Metal and Rings. Um, Andy supports the sport as much as anybody. Um, his his quality is always there. It's the only bottom metal we offer anymore in the shop on builds. Um, I know I'm going to take one out of the pack because it's going to work. Um, the rings, I've, I've always liked them, always um, always had really good luck with them. Um, one thing I particularly like, people make fun of me, but the level on the side is never level. I never even look at the level. But I hook my thumb on his level on his tactical rings and, and use it because I'm more or less free recoil. And um, that level comes in handy for a thumb hook. But um, anyway, Bartline Barrels, I run Bart, we, we actually sell Bartline Barrels exclusively at the shop. Super consistent. There are other barrel manufacturers out there that are great, but Barline Barrels um, happens to take care of me, and I don't have any reason not to shoot them. Um, and Hornady. Um, Hornady's probably uh, my biggest sponsor, and it's nice, you know, being able to run bullets and ammo that you trust and that are consistent. And, you know, Hornady's a great company too. So I'm really proud to run all of those guys. Um, Wade Studeville, who's obviously a partner here at Impact, if people don't know, he's 33% owner at Impact. He's kind of faded out and lets me do all the PR now, but um, he's really the brains behind the design, if you will. Um, he didn't really draw anything up, but he came up with all the features. He does all of my chamber jobs um, here at the shop. Um, but anyway, that's about all I have. Awesome. And shout outs for me. I am, uh, let's see, I got to think. Shout out to Prime Ammunition, McMillan Stocks, Night Force Optics for great glass, Shooters of Augusta and Sharp Shooters of Augusta. Um, to Chris, who was asking about where to shoot in Augusta, um, they you can't really stretch out, but if you're wanting to go and just do zeroing and you can do dot drills at 200 yards um, off of a barricade or something, Sharp Shooters of Augusta is great for that. And they're just great people in general there. Um, an HD Hunter's Gold, and I'm gonna just stop uh, there. One, That's enough. One there. I left off that I that I have left off our shirt of our own match as a gold sponsor is We Bad. Um, <laughs> those guys have always been good to me. Actually, David Weiss was one of the first guys I met in Precision Rifle, um, and um, you know I really like their bags. I run the, the Tater Top now, but the Mini Fortune Cookie I believe is the only bag you need to carry. There are some times where you know, the heavier bag, like Game Changer and stuff like that. The bigger bag work, but if I had to carry one bag, it's going to be a, a mini fortune cookie or a tater tot. So i uh, got to give a shout out to those guys too. I run a mini fortune cookie too. And I tore mine on a helicopter at, in Oklahoma. First time I've ever done it. I've like drugged that bag through everything and never torn it. And I tore yeah for it on the I caught it on the helicopter and I drained the sand out and so I just got some get light fill to try so I'm gonna be putting it in my bag and stitching it back up um see how that goes the sil the sand in that wee bad bag in my opinion is what makes it in the light coating so part of the the con of that light bag is that it rips easy but in our opinion, it's just something you deal with. Just, you know, fix it or so. Oh, or, I deal with um, it. I love the material of it because it just. Uh, it forms uh, to your gun and forms to the prop. And, and that's a big reason. Mm -hmm. You know, the silica sand being fine, um, you know, it's just, it's just money. So it'd be interesting to see what you think. But I think you're going to be wanting to buy some more sand before it's over with. We'll see. I'm, I'm a lightweight. I like lightweight. I get it, but you just told me you took a heavy gun to the finale and it worked out good. So I know, but I kind of looked crazy. I was just talking to Sean tonight. I was like, I look crazy trying to move it into position. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get it positioned. The only time a heavy gun sucks is when you carry. This is true. Very true. It was very wonderful whenever I was shooting it. Was there a discount to go out? Um, yeah, I actually uh, told Greg earlier, and we normally don't do discounts and it's not because we're jerks, but um, we really care about our dealer builders um, that sell our actions, so we don't ever want to feel like we undercut them. But I'm going to uh, put a 10% discount um, for the rest of the week, and what we'll do is um, capital TSM 2020, and um, we'll run it through the end of the year. So for 10% off on anything at the shop. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. So y'all better get them in now. Get the orders in now for the impacts. All right. Well, it was awesome having you. And I do want to thank you for coming on because you spent, what, two hours of your night with us. Has it been that long? Yeah, you, uh, we logged on about 830. On. I mean, the show's been an hour and a half, but I mean, I'm sure you probably got like birthday presents to go buy and stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I got five extra days now. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, you better get your mother-in-law one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what will happen. Please get one. <laughs> Get her a present so you can s still be alive to make actions, please. I will. I will. <laughs> but seriously, thank you for coming on and thank you for supporting the shooting sports because I know you, that Impact is a huge supporter and is at all the matches supporting. So thank you. Thanks for having me, too. Thank you for doing that. And that will be a wrap for episode 322. We'll be back next week. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>